You're watching Fios One News. It's six o'clock. Good evening. Welcome to RFL. I'm Andrew Whitman in for Richard French. President Obama has ordered flags be flown at half staff to honor the victims of the terror attack in Nice. Meanwhile, in France, the investigation continues into the attack that killed 84 people, left a couple of hundred others injured. President Obama has called the French president to offer security assistance. Let's go now to Lana Zach. She's live in Washington with the latest. Good evening, Lana. Good evening. France has become all too familiar with the aftermath of terrorism. This is the fifth time that the country finds itself in mourning since January 2015, the attacks on Charlie Hebdo to now. The white jumpsuits of French investigators today punctuating the ordinarily tranquil promenade in Nice, France. We are learning more about the man police believe perpetrated the attack that left more than 80 people dead, including 10 children. Mohamed Walesh Blel was a delivery man. He was of Tunisian nationality and he had a wife and family. His ex-wife detained by investigators as they try to piece together how and why this ruthless attack occurred. Surveillance cameras catching the truck as it drove over a mile into the crowd watching fireworks along the beach during Bastille Day. Inside that truck, a bicycle, a semi-automatic pistol and fake guns. France's president calling this an act of terror intended to strike at the beauty and liberty of France. Why Nice? Because it is a city that's known around the world, one of the most beautiful cities in the world. And why the 14th of July? Because it is a day where we celebrate freedom. Among the victims, at least two Americans, Sean Copeland and his son Brody. And a UC Berkeley student, Nick Leslie, seen in this Facebook photo, his father says he's still missing. And here in the U.S., the flags over the White House lowered to half-staff. Today, our hearts are with the people of France and with all the innocent men, women, and so many children who were hurt or killed in this sickening attack. The world responding with silence and reflection. And the French authorities did not have the suspect on any watch list for terrorism prior to this attack, though arguably he should have been in prison. He was sentenced to six months for assault back in January. However, he received instead a commuted sentence. Reporting live from Washington, Lana Zak, ABC News. Back to you. All right, Lana, thank you very much. That is the latest in France, but of course, what happens there reverberates here in the United States and also in the presidential race as well. The candidates for president reacting to what's happened in France. Donald Trump sent a tweet last night while we were on the air, and a lot of the details were still up in the air. Here's what he wrote. He wrote, another horrific attack, this time in Nice, France. Many dead and injured. When will we learn? It is only getting worse. Clinton and Trump, of course, have a lot of differences, especially when it comes to the handling of Muslims in the United States. But they do agree on the stakes in the fight against ISIS. Donald Trump was on Bill O'Reilly's, called, called into Bill O'Reilly's program about an hour ago, was asked by Mr. O'Reilly, quote, would you go to Congress and ask for a declaration of war? Donald Trump said, quote, I would, I would, this is war, unquote. Do you think that's the right response? Is this war? Well, I think it's clear um, we... We are at war with these terrorist groups and what they represent. Um, it's a different kind of war. And we need to be smart about how we wage it and win it. Um, so I think we have to look at um, all possible uh, <laughs> approaches to doing just that. All right, let's react now to the political implications here uh, with our panel, we're joined by Richard St. Paul. He's an attorney, a Republican strategist, and a former vice chair for the National Black Republican Association. He'll be with us in Cleveland next week. Shelley Mayer is with us, Democratic Assemblywoman representing the city of Yonkers. Welcome. And Dominic Carter, political journalist and author. So let's start with the, the presidential candidates and the tones of their responses. I was a little surprised the similarity in some of the, the language that Trump and Clinton used. Um, and I, I'm curious, Shelley, did you think... How would you measure the responses of the two presidential candidates? Well, I think Trump was more subdued than he frequently is in tone. And, and uh, I think Secretary Clinton was subdued and also in sort of trying to be very thoughtful. And I think there is a moment when, as Americans, people respond to such carnage in a way of 
toning it down and and as much as we must be correct strategically and decide what to do and I think they they both have their maybe different ideas of how to do it the sense the tone reflected the horror and the moment of grieving and and you know a credit really to Donald Trump who I rarely say anything nice about but in this case I thought the tone as much as I disagree with him all the time, this is a time for a thoughtful tone, not bombastic. Richard, were you surprised that Hillary Clinton seemed to echo Trump's comments about war uh, in the in the clip that we just saw? Well, she said it's a different type of war, so it's not necessarily going to be a declaration of war mm -hmm. because you, t you usually have like a country to declare war against, and this is a terrorist organization. This doesn't really even fall in the Geneva Convention. I mean, it's, it's technical. So she was putting on her Secretary of State I've been in a war room technical hat where Donald Trump is speaking in a very plain language, w even though it may not be technically correct. We need to go to war against ISIS. And I think that's why a lot of people see Donald Trump as more of the law and order candidate, somebody who's going to be tougher. I mean, he's a businessman, but he's, he's trusted more polling among <coughs> Americans. And people feel this business guy will be tougher on terrorism than Hillary Clinton, who has all this experience. And I think that's going to be very tough. That's going to be very tough for her to overcome. And if she doesn't overcome that, she's not going to be able to win this uh, election. I, 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 just, I, I just would say that I think you're wrong, and I also think it's wrong to actually speak this way during this moment. Honestly, I understand we have to talk about politics, but this is a moment in which neither candidate should use this terrible, terrible moment for their political advantage. I understand they should speak about how they would <coughs> respond were they President of the United States, but I don't think that <coughs> she's less strong against these uh, ISIL and that we should say that at this moment and that she's less trustworthy right. in her ability to be strong. I just think this but is not the, the moment. This, in my opinion, this is not the moment to but say it. The reality of the situation is this is how Americans are looking at it. When, they're looking at, when you look at the polling, people see Donald Trump as a strong, he was a businessman, as a stronger candidate. The polls on at the, best show they're even. At best, they don't more, no, it's not that more favor his approach. At best, in the worst case scenario for us, they're even in the latest poll. Uh, accepting that, Secretary, they, sh they should be even. Secretary Clinton has, has been in the war room when Osama bin Laden, the number one terrorist in this world, was killed. There should, no be, there should not be any even. I'm saying we are gearing up for the, the, the nominations of each particular candidate. And these, even though it's tragedy, and you know maybe this isn't the best time to talk about what we must talk about it because Americans are afraid and they're going to want strong leadership. You're saying that even if they're tied on terrorism or foreign so relations, for, so that's a loss for Clinton. She that's should right. be ahead is what Correct. you're saying. Given her experience, right. All right. I want to go back to the, to the, the tweet from Donald Trump, Dominic, and if we can show the tweet, Barry, uh, as we're talking about this, because you wrote, uh, when will we learn it's only getting worse? My, and we read this on the air last night as, as, the, as the news was coming in from Nice. I thought there was a little bit of stoking fear and, and to play for the political advantage that way from that response. Did, do you read that the same way? Uh, yes, and the issue is whether or not the Secretary of State <clears throat> has solid experience in terms of being in the room. The more, that the, and I agree with the Assemblywoman, this is not the time to talk the politics of it, and we have to be very measured in terms of a reaction. But the more that this happens, the more you're greatly increasing the, like, the, 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 the possibility that Trump might be elected president. And it's a scary thought to many people, uh, and, and some degrees to myself included. But every time this happens, because let's look at what his stance is when it comes to uh, permitting people inside. Remember the, the, I don't want to say the elites, but the political insiders may say, oh, it's racist and it's horrible what you said about immigration. It might be, but to middle America, it's connected, and that's based on polling. So each time this happens, Trump gets to double down and say, see, I told you so, when are we going to get serious? And he actually wrote that in a... Can I this concept of the middle America, that's the middle America of 10 years ago. Middle America itself is more diverse, includes Muslims, includes Hispanics. Middle America is not only, as you and I know, at sitting at this table, not only white men who, who have a certain worldview, which I understand Mr. Trump has done a good job of articulating. There are a lot of other people with more nuanced, more sophisticated understanding, and many of them are immigrants, who I believe 
are not going to just fall into line behind Trump, regardless of how many of these things occur. Uh, Assemblywoman, I hope you're right. I pray that you're right. But my response to that is oh, the polling as of yesterday, mm -hmm. Ohio, Virginia, Florida, Florida, Pennsylvania. Ohio, Florida, Pennsylvania. And, and, and Assemblywoman, well, well, I, well, I agree with you won. about middle America. The more afraid voters are about terrorism or concerns about terror or ISIL or foreign policy, I would think that would benefit Donald Trump if only just because he's got the tougher talk. Do you, would you view I, that the I, right I way? I think that's a, a spun narrative that uh, the tough talk and, the ver in my opinion, the very unsophisticated in terms of intelligent analytics. For example, we, we really know nothing about this man from Nice. Nothing. Correct. We know nothing other than he was a petty criminal. Other than that, we know nothing about him. Uh, I'm not disputing that we're going to learn stuff that may, be, uh, may cement our perceptions already, but I think this is a false narrative that people are scared and they will default to a person who just speaks in this very uh, unsophisticated, in my opinion, sort of appealing to what I believe are our crassest instincts. I believe people will say she understands more. She knows one country from another. She knows one leader from another. She knows where the countries are located. She has relationships. And yes, we need that kind of sophisticated, more complex relationships. I don't think it's, it's correct to assume that as scary things happen, Trump sort of emerges. Richard, are, are you at all afraid that Trump over responds? Or, I mean, he's been very measured so far in the 24 hours since the attack right. in Nice. I think you and I both could take bets on how long that will hold. Uh, but what's your concern about the possibility of him going off the reservation saying something a little impolitic in response to this going forward? No, I, I think he's been right on point in terms of where he's been, where he wants to be, which is being seen as the person who is going to be, as he would say, the law and order candidate, somebody who's going to be tough, somebody who's going to bring the fight to, to the terrorists uh, so the fight doesn't end up here. So, you know, it's very interesting. The, the other day where, when the attack happened, Trump announced that I'm not going to announce my vice presidential candidate. And in the headline you saw the attack in Nice and then Trump not announcing that he's going to uh, address his VP candidate, which is very interesting uh, politically in terms of yeah. media-wise. And, media and Richard, the check is in the mail because that is the perfect segue for us because in our next segment on RFL, we're going to talk about Trump's selection of Indiana Governor Mike Pence as his running mate on Twitter. We'll talk about the nomination itself. And then we're going to get into some of Pence's record. Is he running away from some of, some of Trump's signature issues? Stay with us.